SFA Zambia project is a gender-based violence project supported by the United States government under the Women's Justice Empowerment Initiative. Implemented through the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, the program provides medical, legal, and psychological services to survivors of gender-based violence under one roof in facilities called Coordinated Response Centers. These centers are situated in or near health facilities in Lusaka, Kawe, Mazabuka, Livingston, Ndola, Kitwe, and Chipata. The project also engages communities in creating awareness and sensitization on how gender-based violence can be prevented. Hey, what is this? That's you too. What? Is this the kind of dinner that I have? Hey, am I your son or your husband? Is this what I eat? There's no money for me. Then anyway, what you make a woman? I wake every day for 30 days in a month. And how dare you come and tell me that there is no money for food? What is wrong with you? A physically crippling and dehumanizing act, gender-based violence, or GBV, leaves its victims traumatized with feelings of guilt and helplessness. Reports of GBV are an everyday occurrence in Zambia. Nearly half of all women have experienced violence in their homes. These acts of violence have become generally accepted a situation which must change. It takes place all around us, in our neighborhoods and on our streets. One of the most commonly reported forms of gender-based violence is spousal abuse. Spousal abuse is any physical harm inflicted on a victim and can lead to injury, disability and even loss of life. According to the 2007 Zambia Demographic Health Survey, 47% of Zambian women aged between 15 to 49 years have experienced physical abuse in their lifetime. There is also evidence that many more of these cases go unreported. There are a number of reasons why women do not report cases of spousal abuse. These include fear of financial hardship if a husband is sent to prison, fear of stigma and discrimination, and cultural pressures that prevent a woman from discussing bedroom issues outside of their home. So I am so, nineteen hours. 
So, Coordinated response centers were established to allow women and men to receive appropriate response and care when they experience violence. The program is actually running centers in seven districts. These are centers where we call them coordinated response centers. And these are centers where survivors, people who find themselves victims or who find themselves uh, having experienced SGBV, which is sexual and gender-based violence in any way, are able to come and receive services. There's a variety of services that are offered by all the partners that are working on this. So the services are all provided in one roof, and that is why it is called the Coordinated Response Center. Because the program is actually promoting a coordinated response where we have medical facilities, police facilities, counseling, and other skills training for, for women, everything done under one roof to ensure that a woman who has experienced GBV in one way or another can be helped comprehensively. ASASA stands for SFA Zambia. It is um, a program that is funded by the United States government under the Women and Justice Empowerment Initiative and also the European Union. It was um, established to actually respond to gender-based violence, which was seen to be on the increase um, the project is managed by Care International in Zambia and um, the partners that we are working with are World Vision, AfriCare, the YWCA, WILSA and uh, the Catholic Relief Services, government partners who are the victim support unit under the police and also the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services, the Ministry of Health, GID and also the Child Justice Forum under the judiciary. Your brother was married with two children. Mary, please. We do um, awareness in the communities. We do awareness uh, in the media. We also do a lot of training of all the partners that we are working with. We also do a lot of materials. We do a lot of drama. The whole idea is, apart from responding, we are also doing prevention. So the communication which we do is all about creating awareness to change behaviors, but also to change attitudes in the communities. He tells me he loves me and that it is okay to do this. He's my daddy and I love him. What do I do? Who do I tell what is happening to me? Each of the centers has a coordinator that is responsible for assessing victims' needs and starting the process of their recovery. When a survivor comes to our center, 
The first contact is our data entry clerk. She welcomes the survivor and then identify which counselor is free and then the survivor is taken to that counselor. During counseling, of course, the counselor will find out what has brought that survivor to the center. And it is from that or from there that he or she will identify the needs of a particular survivor. So if, for instance, that case requires the intervention of a police officer, then the client or survivor will be referred to our VSU officer who is stationed at the center. If there's need for legal intervention, we have a paralegal officer at the center. If, for instance, it was a case of defilement, rape, or spouse battery, obviously there will be need for medical intervention. So we are fortunate here at Mutendere CRC because we are located right at a clinic and therefore that uh, medical intervention is provided right there at the center. The police have been trained by the project to investigate and collect evidence on gender-based violence cases and present the necessary evidence in the courts of law. The police have also been trained in the management of GBV survivors as witnesses. The Zambia Police Service under the Victim Support Unit have taken steps to ensure they are well equipped to deal with matters of gender-based violence including domestic violence. The Zambia Police Service plays an important role in ensuring that survivors of gender-based violence receive access to justice. The Victim Support Unit ensures that perpetrators are arrested and convicted. In this regard, the Zambia Police Service has partnered with the Asaza Project to ensure that survivors of GBV receive legal services in the shortest possible time and therefore each coordinated response center has a resident victim support unit officer. In the past, cases of gender-based violence were not treated seriously by the police. These cases were being considered as family affairs or domestic affairs. But with the coming of the Zambia police reform programs, which saw the birth of the victim support unit, these type of cases are now treated seriously like any other cases. And if one goes to the police to complain against the spouse, that the spouse has battered her or battered him, police officers are not hesitating to come in forthwith, investigate and arrest the perpetrator. The legal system is also working hand in hand with the police to make sure that the citizens are protected from abuse and that if reported, the victim can be supported to go through the prosecution without fear. I think that we, our interest, of course, is to preserve the family unit. I think that's our major interest. But depending on the nature of the offence, of course, if it's the aggravated assault, we cannot encourage um, reconciliation because definitely there's need that the, the, the person, the abuser, needs help. And, uh, and, and we have a law which says that this is a criminal offence and therefore we cannot shield this uh, abuser because he has broken the law. Most, most of the times, especially the women who are economically dependent on this husband or spouse, have a problem to, to carry on with the, with the case because once they are told that actually if they pursue this case legally and the case goes to court, the, the, the husband could face it a, an imprisonment of up to five years. This normally uh, deters them because they, they, they think about what will they eat and how will their children go to school. But also some of the women, it's, it's also an issue of if they, if they tell, 
if they come and report the case, then their spouse will, might chase them from the house and they don't have anywhere to go because they're economically dependent on this man. But in that case, we then refer the case to YWCA who are able to show, give them a shelter whilst the case is, is going to court. In a society where matters of the home are traditionally dealt with privately, it is challenging to facilitate open discussions that will discourage violence. Asaza, in partnership with YWCA, has started the men's network support group that encourages men not to engage in violence. The network also helps abusers to confront their violence and turn it into non-violent positive communication. The reason why the men's network was formed, it is just the fact that uh, why WC as a whole used to deal with cases just involving women. In other ways, it was just responding to cases of uh, gender-based violence. And then uh, it was because of that background that women could come and report the cases and then nothing much was being done as in the way of, of preventing it. So they thought, okay, so why, what, what's the solution? What else can we do to like bring down the levels of, of gender-based violence? Then they thought of creating the men's network. And then a study was conducted to find out whether violence exists. And it was discovered that violence exists and 90% of the perpetrators were men. So uh, the men's network was, was created under that background so that it can work as a prevention measure to bring down the levels of gender-based uh, violence. It's important to note that the gender-based violence communication strategy is led by the Minister of Community Development and Social Services in close collaboration with the Gender and Development Division, purposely, because first of all, the government is extremely committed to fighting gender-based violence, and secondly, this is the only way or the best way in which we can sustain activities in relation to reducing gender-based violence in our country. I'd also like to mention that this partnership is one that is greatly enjoyed with the ASAZA program. Um, the communication strategy itself led the whole process being led by the government and with the funding that is from the United States government through the ASAZA program, the government has then been supported with the development of the communication strategy and going beyond that to actually implement communication messages and interventions that will actually contribute towards the impact of uh, the strategy as well as reducing gender-based violence in the country. Through the efforts of the ASAZA project, both women and men are being transformed to create safer environments which do not condone gender-based violence. Couple counseling is one effective intervention that the project utilizes to promote healthy relationships between spouses. In some instances, couples have been reconciled, whilst in drastic situations, women or men have been advised to pursue legal remedies through the courts of law. Nenzo yopa, nenzo vuti, kachabe mwamene so aze silevu. Nenzo vuti, nenzo yopa, nda wawantu wena nguwezo kambati. E, mkaenda kukoti, kusiana na wamuna wanu, chifukwa ndi mwe muza gula saimoni, so kuzafu nikati, kuja kukoti waza kambati, imwe kashimu lipire wamuna wanu. So nenzo yopa, ine sini sebenza na usebenza, ndrama zo lipira mtu nzazi peza kuti. Alesi kuja kuwaida brusi wa nitandiza, mirandu ya inakambiwa. Kukoti ina pesa wa muna wanga wa ina mulandu, but tikaribo siya na wa muna wanga wana pempa kote ati. E, ni gwiri deni, so sinza kabweza hapo bana wazaka vutika. So wana wapasa one month ati, ngati suuza chincha zeni mkabwe kujajment. So wana wauza ati, kulibe kugona auti, kulibe kusia wana na njala. But ya mene yode ya mene tunachoka mkoti wa muna wanga, ndia ya mene wanaenda futi. So wana buwela after, five days tufunoenda kukoti. So koti kujia wana kambacha bawe musiane since ni criminal case wana mwameo na ngambira na vova wa mkazi. Many of the survivors that have visited the coordinated response centers have undergone huge changes as a result of the support they have received from the center.
So so when you move, na have to go to So na you move, you have to go to the So when you move, you have to go to the hospital. So when you move, you have to go to the hospital. So So when you move, you have So in terms of transformation, we have seen survivors that have reconciled with their husbands, that is in cases of spousal abuse. We've seen cases where children were neglected by uh, either the father or the mother. They've actually come back to the, uh, support these children. We've also seen situations where those that were defiled, the cases have gone through court and we've already had cases that have been sentenced by the High Court. So in this one year, we are also saying that we've seen a number of survivors come in to join what we call the circle of friends and this is aimed at providing more psychosocial therapy for those that are still undergoing uh, psychosocial counseling. The United States government funded Project Asaza provides many beneficial services in response to reported cases of GBV, but unfortunately, there are hundreds more cases that go unreported. ASAZA is here to help. Coordinated response centers are located in the following locations. In Lusaka, at the YWCA opposite UTH, and at Mutendere Clinic. In Kawe, at Kawe General Hospital, in Mazabuka at Mazabuka District Hospital, in Livingstone at Livingstone General Hospital, in Dola at Ndola Central Hospital, in Kitwe at Buchi Clinic, and in Chipata at Kalongwezi area. The centers are staffed and ready to assist anybody who needs their help. The Asaza project is here to help. Together, through partnership and hard work, we can create and achieve a safer Zambia. Do not suffer alone. Tell a friend who can help. Tell Asaza 